Section 13 of Musings of a Chinese Mystic Selections from the Philosophy of Chuang Tzu by Lionel Giles. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Random Gleanings Take no heed of time, nor of right and wrong, but, passing into the realm of the infinite, take your final rest therein. Our life has a limit, but knowledge is without limit. To serve one's prince without reference to the act, but only to the service, is the perfection of a subject's loyalty. In trials of skill, at first all is friendliness, but at last it is all antagonism. Tzu Chi of Nanpo was traveling on the Shang Mountain when he saw a large tree which astonished him very much. A thousand chariot teams could have found shelter under its shade. "'What tree is this?' cried Tzu Chi. "'Surely it must have unusually fine timber.' Then, looking up, he saw that its branches were too crooked for rafters, while as to the trunk, he saw that its irregular grain made it valueless for coffins. He tasted a leaf, but it took the skin off his lips and its odor was so strong that it would make a man as it were drunk for three days together. Ah, said Su Chi, this tree is good for nothing, and that is how it has attained this size. A wise man might well follow its example. A man does not seek to see himself in running water, but in still water, for only what is itself still can instill stillness into others. Is Confucius a sage, or is he not? How is it he has so many disciples? He aims at being a subtle dialectician, not knowing that such a reputation is regarded by real sages as the fetters of a criminal. He who delights in man is himself not a perfect man. His affection is not true charity depending upon opportunity he has not true worth he who is not conversant with both good and evil is not a superior man he who disregards his reputation is not what a man should be he who is not absolutely oblivious of his own existence can never be a ruler of men when the pond dries up and the fishes are left upon dry ground to moisten them with the breath or to damp them with spittle is not to be compared with leaving them in the first instance in their native rivers and lakes and better than praising yao and blaming chia would be leaving them both and attending to the development of tao fishes are born in water man is born in tao if fishes get ponds to live in they thrive if man gets Tao to live in, he may live his life in peace. May I ask, said Tzu Kung, about divine men? Divine men, replied Confucius, are divine to man, but ordinary to God. Hence the saying that the meanest being in heaven would be the best on earth, and the best on earth, the meanest in heaven. The goodness of a wise ruler covers the whole empire, yet he himself seems to know it not. It influences all creation, yet none is conscious thereof. It appears under countless forms, bringing joy to all things. It is based upon the baseless, and travels through the realms of nowhere. By inaction, one can become the center of thought the focus of responsibility, the arbiter of wisdom. Full allowance must be made for others while remaining unmoved oneself. There must be a thorough compliance with divine principles without any manifestation thereof, all of which may be summed up in the one word, passivity. For the perfect man employs his mind as a mirror. It grasps nothing. It refuses nothing. It receives, but does not keep, and thus he can triumph over matter without injury.
to himself. Every addition to or deviation from nature belongs not to the ultimate perfection of all. He who would attain to such perfection never loses sight of the natural conditions of his existence. With him the joined is not united, nor the separated apart, nor the long in excess, nor the short wanting. For just as a duck's legs, though short, cannot be lengthened without pain to the duck, and a crane's legs, though long, cannot be shortened without misery to the crane, so that which is long in man's moral nature cannot be cut off, nor that which is short be lengthened. All sorrow is thus avoided. What I mean by perfection is not what is meant by charity and duty to one's neighbor. It is found in the cultivation of Tao, and those whom I regard as cultivators of Tao are not those who cultivate charity and duty to one's neighbor. They are those who yield to the natural conditions of things. What I call perfection of hearing is not hearing others, but oneself. What I call perfection of vision is not seeing others, but oneself. For a man who sees not himself but others takes not possession of himself, but of others, thus taking what others should take and not what he himself should take. Instead of being himself, he in fact becomes someone else. Sui Chu asked Lao Tzu, saying, If the empire is not to be governed, how are men's hearts to be kept in order? Be careful, replied Lao Tzu, not to interfere with the natural goodness of the heart of man. Man's heart may be forced down or stirred up. In each case, the issue is fatal. The men of this world rejoice in others being like themselves, and object to others not being like themselves. If metal and stone were without Tao, they would not be capable of emitting sound, and just as they possess the property of sound, but will not emit sound unless struck, so surely is the same principle applicable to all creation. In the Golden Age, good men were not appreciated, ability was not conspicuous. Rulers were mere beacons, while the people were free as the wild deer. They were upright without being conscious of duty to their neighbors. They loved one another without being conscious of charity. They were true without being conscious of loyalty. They were honest without being conscious of good faith. They acted freely in all things without recognizing obligations to anyone. Thus their deeds left no trace. Their affairs were not handed down to posterity. A man who knows that he is a fool is not a great fool. Appeal to arms is the lowest form of virtue. Rewards and punishments are the lowest form of education. Ceremonies and laws are the lowest form of government. Music and fine clothes are the lowest form of happiness. Weeping and mourning are the lowest form of grief. These five should follow the movements of the mind. The ancients indeed cultivated the study of accidentals, but they did not allow it to precede that of essentials. It is easy to be respectfully filial, but difficult to be affectionately filial. But even that is easier than to become unconscious of one's natural obligations, which is in turn easier than to cause others to be unconscious of the operations thereof. Similarly, this is easier than to become altogether unconscious of the world, which again is easier than to cause the world to be unconscious of one's influence upon it. Charity and duty to one's neighbor are as caravanserais established by wise rulers of old. You may stop there one night, but not for long, or you will incur reproach. Both small and great things must equally possess form. 
the mind cannot picture to itself a thing without form nor conceive a form of unlimited dimensions the greatness of anything may be a topic of discussion or the smallest of anything may be mentally realized but that which can be neither a topic of discussion nor realized mentally can be neither great nor small the life of man passes like a galloping horse changing at every turn at every hour what should he do or what should he not do other than let his decomposition go on as to what the world does and the way in which people are happy now i know not whether such happiness be real happiness or not the happiness of ordinary persons seems to me to consist in slavishly following the majority as if they could not help it yet they all say they are happy but i cannot say that this is happiness or that it is not happiness is there then after all such a thing as happiness i make true pleasure to consist in inaction which the world regards as great pain thus it has been said perfect happiness is the absence of happiness a man who plays for counters will play well if he stakes his girdle he will be nervous if yellow gold he will lose his wits his skill is the same in each case but he is distracted by the value of his stake and every one who attaches importance to the external becomes internally without resource the grand augur in his ceremonial robes approached the shambles and thus addressed the pigs how can you object to die i shall fatten you for three months i shall discipline myself for ten days and fast for three i shall strew fine grass and place you bodily upon a carved sacrificial dish does not this satisfy you then speaking from the pig's point of view he continued it is better perhaps after all to live on bran and escape the shambles but then added he speaking from his own point of view to enjoy honor when alive one would readily die on a war shield or in the headsman's basket so he rejected the pig's point of view and adopted his own point of view in what sense then was he different from the pigs when yang tzu went to the sung state he passed a night at an inn the innkeeper had two concubines one beautiful the other ugly the latter he loved the former he hated yang tzu asked how this was whereupon one of the inn servants said the beautiful one is so conscious of her beauty that one does not think her beautiful the ugly one is so conscious of her ugliness that one does not think her ugly note this my disciples cried yang tzu be virtuous but without being consciously so and wherever you go you will be beloved shun asked chong saying can one get tao so as to have it for one's own your very body replied chong is not your own how should tao be if my body said shun is not my own pray whose is it it is the delegated image of god replied chong your life is not your own it is the delegated harmony of god your individuality is not your own it is the delegated adaptability of god your posterity is not your own it is the delegated exuviae of god you move but know not how you are rest but know not why you taste but know not the cause these are the operation of god's laws how then should you get tao so as to have it for your own man passes through this sublunary life as a sunbeam passes a crack here one moment gone the next mountain forests and loamy fields swell my heart with joy but ere the joy be past sorrow is upon me again joy and sorrow come and go and over them i have no control alas 
the life of man is but as a stoppage at an inn he knows that which comes within the range of his experience otherwise he knows not he knows that he can do what he can do and that he cannot do what he cannot do but there is always that which he does not know and that which he cannot do and to struggle that it shall not be so is not this a cause for grief the best language is that which is not spoken the best form of action is that which is without deeds spread out your knowledge and it will be found to be shallow as to yao and shun what claim have they to praise their fine distinction simply amounted to knocking a hole in a wall in order to stop it up with brambles to combing each individual hair to counting the grains for a rice pudding how in the name of goodness did they profit their generation let knowledge stop at the unknowable that is perfection there is no weapon so deadly as man's will excalibur is second to it there is no bandit so powerful as nature in the whole universe there is no escape from it yet it is not nature which does the injury it is man's own heart birth is not a beginning death not an end discard this stimuli of purpose free the mind from disturbances get rid of entanglements to virtue pierce the obstructions to tao a one-legged man discards ornament his exterior not being open to commendation condemned criminals will go up to great heights without fear for they no longer regard life and death from their former point of view and those who pay no attention to their moral clothing and condition become oblivious to their own personality and by thus becoming oblivious of their personality they proceed to be the people of god wherefore if men revere them they rejoice not if men insult them they are not angered but only those who have passed into the eternal harmony of god are capable of this if your anger is external not internal it will be anger proceeding from not anger if your actions are external not internal they will be actions proceeding from inaction if you would attain peace level down your emotional nature if you desire spirituality cultivate adaptation of the intelligence if you would have your actions in accordance with what is right allow yourself to fall in with the dictates of necessity for necessity is the tao of the sage if schemers have nothing to give them anxiety they are not happy if dialecticians have not their premises and conclusions they are not happy if critics have none on whom to vent their spleen they are not happy such men are the slaves of objective existences a dog is not considered a good dog because he is a good barker a man is not considered a good man because he is a good talker the rulers of old set off all success to the credit of their people attributing all failure to themselves when chu po yu reached his sixtieth year he changed his opinions what he had previously regarded as right he now came to regard as wrong but who shall say whether the right of today may not be as wrong as the wrong of the previous fifty-nine years xiao chi asked dai kong tiao saying what is meant by society society replied dai kong tiao is an agreement of a certain number of families and individuals to abide by certain customs discordant elements unite to form a harmonious whole take away this unity and each has a separate individuality point at any one of the many parts of a horse and that is not a horse although there is the horse before you it is the combination of all which makes the horse similarly a mountain is high because of its individual particles a river is large because of its individual drops 
and he is just a man who regards all parts from the point of view of the whole thus in regard to the views of others he holds his own opinion but not obstinately in regard to his own views while conscious of their truth he does not despise the opinions of others wood rubbed with wood produces fire metal exposed to fire will liquefy if the positive and negative principles operate inharmoniously heaven and earth are greatly disturbed thunder crashes and with rain comes lightning scorching up the tall locust trees so in the struggle between peace and unrest the friction between good and evil much fire is evolved which consumes the inner harmony of man but the mind is unable to resist fire it is destroyed and with it tao comes to an end get rid of small wisdom and great wisdom will shine upon you put away goodness and you will be naturally good a child does not learn to speak because taught by professors of the art but because it lives among people who can themselves speak man has for himself a spacious domain his mind may roam to heaven if there is no room in the house the wife and her mother-in-law run against one another if the mind cannot roam to heaven the faculties will be in a state of antagonism the raison d'etre of a fish trap is the fish when the fish is caught the trap may be ignored the raison d'etre of a rabbit snare is the rabbit when the rabbit is caught the snare may be ignored the raison d'etre of language is an idea to be expressed when the idea is expressed the language may be ignored but where shall i find a man to ignore language with whom i may be able to converse alas man's knowledge reaches to the hair on a hair but not to eternal peace the heart of man is more dangerous than the mountains and rivers more difficult to understand than heaven itself heaven has its periods of spring summer autumn winter daytime and night man has an impenetrable exterior and his motives are inscrutable thus some men appear to be retiring when they are really forward others have abilities yet appear to be worthless others are compliant yet gain their ends others take a firm stand yet yield the point others go slow yet advance quickly End of section 13section 14 of musings of a chinese mystic selections from the philosophy of chuang tzu by lionel giles this librivox recording is in the public domain personal anecdotes chuang tzu was fishing in the pu when the prince of chu sent two high officials to ask him to take charge of the administration of the chu state chuang tzu went on fishing and without turning his head said i have heard that in the chu there is a sacred tortoise which has been dead now some three thousand years and that the prince keeps this tortoise carefully enclosed in a chest on the altar of his ancestral temple now would this tortoise rather be dead and have its remains venerated or be alive and wagging its tail in the mud it would rather be alive replied the two officials and wagging its tail in the mud be gone cried chuang tzu i too will wag my tail in the mud hui tzu was prime minister of the liang state chuang tzu went thither to visit him someone remarked chuang tzu has come he wants to be minister in your place thereupon hui tzu was afraid and searched all over the state for three days and three nights to find him. Then Chuang Tzu went to see Hui Tzu and said, In the south there is a bird. It is a kind of phoenix. Do you know it? It started from the south sea to fly to the north sea, except on the Wu Tung tree it would not alight. It would eat nothing but the fruit of the bamboo, drink nothing but the purest spring water. 
an owl which had got the rotten carcass of a rat looked up as the phoenix flew by and screeched you are now screeching at me over your kingdom of liang chuang tzu and wei tzu had strolled onto the bridge over the hao when the former observed see how the minnows are darting about that is the pleasure of fishes you not being a fish yourself said wei tzu how can you possibly know in what consists the pleasure of fishes and you not being i retorted chuang tzu how can you know that i do not know if i not being you cannot know what you know urged wei tzu it follows that you not being a fish cannot know in what consists the pleasure of fishes let us go back said chuang tzu to your original question you asked me how i knew in what consists the pleasure of fishes your very question shows that you knew i knew i knew it from my own feelings on this bridge when chuang tzu's wife died wei tzu went to condole he found the widower sitting on the ground singing with his legs spread out at a right angle and beating time on a bowl to live with your wife exclaimed wei tzu and see your eldest son grow up to be a man and then not to shed a tear over her corpse this would be bad enough but to drum on a bowl and sing surely this is going too far not at all replied chuang tzu when she died i could not help being affected by her death soon however i remembered that she had already existed in a previous state before birth without form or even substance that while in that unconditioned condition substance was added to spirit that this substance then assumed form and that the next stage was birth and now by virtue of a further change she is dead passing from one phase to another like the sequence of spring summer autumn and winter and while she is thus lying asleep in eternity for me to go about weeping and wailing would be to proclaim myself ignorant of these natural laws therefore i refrain when chuang tzu was about to die his disciples expressed a wish to give him a splendid funeral but chuang tzu said with heaven and earth for my coffin and shell with the sun moon and stars as my burial regalia and with all creation to escort me to the grave are not my funeral paraphernalia ready to hand we fear argued the disciples lest the carrion kite should eat the body of our master to which chuang tzu replied above ground i shall be food for kites below i shall be food for mole crickets and ants why rob one to feed the other end of section 14 recording by scotty smith end of musings of a chinese mystic selections from the philosophy of chuang tzu by lionel giles translated by herbert allen giles